Welcome to Brisbane, the capital and largest city in Queensland, Australia. And this is Queen's Park. Australia is, of course, part of the British Commonwealth, the union of nations, so to speak, that all recognize the uh, royalty of the United Kingdom being previously British colonies, no longer headed by Queen Elizabeth, of course, but uh, King Charles. And speaking of queens, Queen Victoria, 1837 to 1901. So today is April 5th. It is currently 87 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 30 degrees Celsius. Let's go take a look at that uh, art there. Looks like it might be some native art. So it is just perfect uh, weather conditions. Good and warm, but uh, not overwhelming. Not as humid as up north in uh, Cairns. A lovely, lovely day here. So I'm just going to wander around this area here. It is kind of a peninsula with the downtown area and lots of the uh, things to see. Show you what's going on around here. Just flew in yesterday from Cairns. As you saw, my uh, apartment there is absolutely epic. One of the best places I've ever stayed. Really love it, especially the view, but all around really nice uh, place there with a separate bedroom and for a very reasonable price. So I don't know uh, about this, but it definitely looks very much like some native Australian art. And an old historical building here, Treasury, Brisbane. Elizabeth Street, I'm sure referencing Queen Elizabeth. And here the water. Ferris wheel. It is quite the uh, concrete jungle here. Apparently the nicer beaches are at Gold Coast and I'm going to go there tomorrow for a couple of days. So this is the Brisbane River here, flowing out that way to Morton Bay. 
and then the Pacific Ocean. The coast is several miles away from here, so I don't think that I will be showing the coast or any beaches in this video. I'm going to walk back this way and focus on exploring this part of the city. So there's a street food area here, and I'm getting hungry for some lunch, so uh, let's take a look at what they got. Fudge. Pet treats. Churros, juice. Donuts. Some yummy smells around here. Asian chicken buns, falafel pocket. Okay, there you go, fourteen ninety Australian, about ten bucks. More falafel. A proper market. They even got produce. Lots of choices. What to go for. I'm kind of thinking about the falafel at this point. Turkish food, breakfast gozleme. Turkish donut balls, German bakery. Some very good looking stuff. More fruit. So it's either the falafels or the lamb, I'm thinking, but uh, I'd say leaning towards the falafel. Indian food. Which sauce? Chili sauce. Uh, is it fairly hot or just a little bit or a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. And also the tahini. Oh, it says salsa. Is that the chili sauce? Salsa is the chili sauce? Okay, yes, yes. We love watching you. Oh, brilliant. Really, really good. Excellent. I, we're just next door at the, at the eating place, but we watch your videos all the time. Oh, we're very cool, very cool. Really fantastic. That's my husband, Mark. Alrighty. Love Hi there, Mark. Yep. Good, nice to meet you. Love the mispronunciation of things you do. Yep, it's, it's, it's relentless. It's hilarious. <laughs> Are you guys from Brisbane? or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I get it sort of right, Brisbane? Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of, sort of? yeah, I like the way you try and say Melbourne all the time. It's, yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> Anything goes, but... I'm filming right now. Are you okay with being oh, in the video? Okay. Are you? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, That's cool. Yeah. Just, I was just filming oh, okay. just anyway. How so. long are you up here for now? Yeah, we don't have a tahini. Oh, no tahini. Yeah. Do you have like hummus? Yes. Okay, some hummus then. Uh, I'm flying out of Sydney in uh, three days. Okay. Yeah, so it's but coming to a close here. Oh, uh, one more night. Uh, yeah. I just arrived yesterday from Cairns. Yep. And then. Yeah, in Cairns. Okay, yeah. and then tomorrow I'm going to Gold Coast yeah. for a couple of days. Okay, yeah. And Sunshine then. Coast. Nicer. What's that? The Sunshine Coast is a lot nicer. From there on down, kind of? Yeah, yeah. Gold Coast, you can keep going down. Yeah. The Sunshine Coast is prettier. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, Excellent. Well, enjoy your trip, hey? Great. Nice yeah, to meet you. Nice yep. To meet Thanks you. for watching. See ya. Take care. 
So there you go, 15 bucks, but it's pretty huge. Looks good. It's really a shame that they didn't have the tahini because tahini is just really delicious. Gives it a lot of flavor and, uh, you know, moistens it up. But we got some other sauces on there, so I think that's gonna be good. So this is the Roma Street Park. Going to walk through here. Show some of the uh, plants of the region. Maybe also from elsewhere, not sure, but uh, looks like a nice park. And as I walk along, I thought that I would talk about something. So for those who saw my last video, or even if you didn't, then I thought that I would discuss the issue of like making travel plans, in particular my own travel plans. I discussed in that other video how I had to make a decision because of a flight that I have booked, that I booked before I arrived in Australia and working around that. And then just kind of illustrate in the process the decisions you have to make in the course of your travel planning and practical realities and problems that you run into, etc. Okay, we got a bin chicken. Look at that beak. That is a... Uh, something great for picking food out of wherever. And then we got... I forget. I saw that in Sydney, the one on the left there. Anyway, some uh, local bird life. So before I flew to Australia, I booked a flight out because I thought that that was going to be required for me to enter the country. As it turned out, nobody asked about it, so it wasn't necessary, but uh, I decided to book a flight from Sydney to Fiji, which I've never been to, never been to the South Pacific. It was a very cheap flight, around 200 bucks, and it is on the way going back to the United States, which I'm planning to do very soon. In fact, that is where I'm headed and I will explain uh, my way of getting there in the course of this uh, talk here. So, I booked that flight not knowing how long I would stay in Fiji and that was 18 days after arriving in Sydney. So I had 18 days in Australia and then get to Fiji. If I even took the flight, I wasn't certain that I would. And so, that flight is on April 8th in three days. But I wasn't exactly certain if I wanted to take it, also because Sydney is a 10-hour drive south of Brisbane here. So I thought, well, maybe I will book another flight from Brisbane to Fiji and then just skip that uh, flight out of Sydney. So I was 
checking the flight options, including where I would go from Fiji. Basically, there were kind of limited options if I was headed back to the United States. It was a flight to, you know, Los Angeles direct or up to Oregon or whatever, but uh, there weren't direct flights from Fiji to Oregon where I'm going to uh, pick up my car and go visit family and stuff like that. And so the other obvious option was making a stop in Hawaii because it is right on the way. So checking the options, then it turned out there were some great deals on flights to Honolulu, Hawaii. I haven't been to Hawaii in five years. It's about time. I've been thinking about it anyways. Another bin chicken. So I started uh, checking the flight options from there. But the only direct flights from Fiji to Honolulu were like twice a week. So there's one on April 11th and then the next one wasn't until six days later on April 17th. Now because of just my general uh, plans I decided I didn't want to stay like 10 days, arrive there on the 8th in Fiji and then leave on the 17th. So nine, 10 days there. Of course you could spend, you know, that much time there, I'm sure. But it's just kind of a matter of my plans to get back to the US and get ready for summer travels elsewhere because summer's around the corner. And so I decided to go ahead and book the flight from Fiji to Honolulu on the 11th. So then I had the quandary of, am I going to get down to Sydney and then take that flight on the 8th? Now the flight leaves late at night on the 11th. So at least that gives me one more day in Fiji. But in checking the uh, flight options out of Brisbane, then there were only overnight flights. And as I talked about before, that messes me up. I will have the overnight flight to Hawaii. So I'll just have to deal with that. But that was the only option. But uh, the flights from Brisbane to Fiji were only late at night. I was about to go for it. In fact, I started to book it and tried to, and then it had already uh, been sold. There was only one seat left when I was looking, so that didn't happen. I think it's probably for the best because of that overnight thing. So then I had to think, well, how am I getting to Fiji? I still had the flight booked on the 8th, so I just had to get down to Sydney. And so I was thinking, well, I could take a bus, I could rent a car, drop it in Sydney, see the whole Sunshine Coast and everything, which sounded great basically drive over two days getting there. But then I checked flights from Brisbane to Sydney, 80 bucks, I think 100 with uh, luggage. And that is just the simpler, quicker option. So I just booked that today. It is all set up. Staying tonight in Brisbane. Tomorrow, taking the train one hour to Gold Coast. Stay there one night. And then the next day, flight to Sydney. And the next day, flight to Fiji. Three full days in Fiji. Not enough time, but uh, better than nothing. And I'm sure that I will make good use of it. And then flight to Honolulu. From there, I haven't booked anything yet, but uh, probably a direct flight from there back to Oregon. So that is the plan. So the real name for these guys is not a bin chicken, that is the Australian nickname. They are an Australian white ibis. And I think they're pretty cool. I guess they're kind of considered a pest because there are a lot of them and they root through the garbage, etc. But uh, 
to me anyways, they are quite unique. Little garden area. The scarecrow is not working. Another one there. They are all over the place. The Petrie Tableau, commissioned and created in the bicentennial year 1988 to honor the early families of Brisbane and to capture the pioneering spirit of the city. The Tableau depicts the departure of Andrew Petrie for an inland expedition from the Morton Bay settlement. So Morton Bay is right here at uh, Brisbane. In 1842, Petrie's wife Mary is handing him a drinking bottle as their daughter Isabella watches. Young Tom Petrie plays on the riverbank with two of his Aboriginal friends. His experiences were later recorded and became a classic document of Aboriginal tribal life. John Petrie, who went on to become Brisbane's first mayor and a prominent engineer, holds his father's impatient horse. The event is observed by a convict recently freed from his shackles by Petrie. So, That is the depiction of the family there. The father and the son. And then we got some roos. A little taste of the historic beginnings of colonial Australia. And out here is the Queen Street Market. Gonna walk through there. Make sure you had it recorded on your mobile. A big souvenir on this holiday. Some nice blues there. I gave him two dollars Australian. That's about a dollar twenty or so US. So this is the Queen Street Market, a classic pedestrian shopping zone. Queen Street Mall. Check that out. The longest carrot grown in history measured six meters long. Man, I had no idea. That's like 20 feet. Very cool area here. A good spot to hang out.
So this is one of the places that came up as one of the sights to see. Eagle Street Pier. But as you saw there, it seems to be under construction. So I'm not sure what there is to see at the moment, but uh, you can get a look once again at the Brisbane River. There was a sign saying, famous for food. So I guess normally then that area that was all under construction is a place with various eateries. But as you can see, it is all blocked off. Somebody flying a drone. We got one restaurant open. River Bar, appropriately named. Nice view. So the river really snakes around on its way to Morton Bay. So I'm kind of feeling like that is going to do it for Brisbane. I could walk around more and just show more streets and skyscrapers and stuff, but uh, from my searching online, then what I showed already were basically the main things to see. I'm sure that a local would have some uh, great suggestions. Of course, there is a uh, great selection of various restaurants you can find i'm sure very unique different uh, restaurants and pubs there was the cool irish pub that i showed at the beginning that was dinner last night but uh as i said basically it's a concrete jungle speaking of jungle we got some real jungle there So a banyan tree, I guess, or something Australian that is similar. It looks like this is actually one tree, or maybe one, two. So, I think it's pint time. Gonna find somewhere to uh, take a seat, grab a beer, get to work editing this video. Maybe I'll head back to the uh, Irish pub, unless I see something else along the way that looks good. I am all ready to roll with my laptop in my backpack here, so I can just get straight to work. St. Stephen's Cathedral. I love the contrast of these older buildings up against the skyscrapers. I think that I might be able to film inside.
Gilhulis. Fifteen bucks Australian. That's ten dollars US for a Carlton. Working on the video here. Got some fish and chips for $27 Australian. That is 18 bucks US with the salad. That is it for Brisbane. See ya.